intelligent, formidable hunters, graceful swimmers. Killer whales and dolphins are everyone's favorite marine mammals. But in Europe's oceans, their numbers have been dwindling to dangerously low levels. This is the Zoological Society of London, where scientists have been trying to figure out what's been causing this decline. Whenever you hear about a cetacean being stranded on the UK coastline, the team here become involved. When a marine mammal is found dead, a forensic investigation gets underway as quickly as possible. Today, it's this harbour porpoise that was found washed up on a beach in Devon that's about to undergo its post-mortem. But scientists are finding, in case after case, these animals' bodies are loaded with a toxic chemical that many of us thought was a problem long gone. PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenyls, were man-made wonder chemicals. Heralded for their stability, they were used in everything from plastics to paints, lubricants and cement. But it was later realised PCBs are toxic, hence a sequence of bans across the world through much of the 1980s. But despite this, PCBs have stuck around. Many landfill sites contain the materials they were used in, and they're leaching into the waterways, working their way into the marine food chain. So this is the uh, blubber sample we take, which would be what we would test for the chemical pollutants. Around Europe, uh, tests have been carried out on over a thousand marine mammals. Every single one was contaminated with PCBs, some at shockingly high levels. You can see the, the skin and the, and the blubber here, the blubber layer, but the PCBs are invisible. They're, you know, the invisible killer, really. Dr Paul Jepson is one of the researchers in this area. The levels of the PCBs in some species in Europe are the highest in the world. And um, if we have very high concentrations, then there's a range of toxic effects. But probably the one we're most worried about is the suppression of reproduction, that basically the, the dolphins just stop reproducing normally. And we think this is having a devastating effect on their conservation. With samples of the blubber removed for testing, they're able to open the porpoise up completely. And once inside, they make a discovery. So what we've actually found is that the, the animal is, uh, is, is pregnant or has been pregnant. Also, the cervix is dilated, so I can get my, uh, my hand through. So she's obviously very actually recently aborted. Um, there's no fetus in here, but it does look like there might be an infection. This infection proved to be the cause of death for both the porpoise and its calf. Dr. Jepson believes marine mammals are more susceptible to such infections when they have a high concentration of PCBs in their bodies. This line is a threshold for what's considered to be a tolerable level of PCBs in animals. Harbour porpoises are doing badly enough, but look at the levels found in dolphins and killer whales. It's estimated that 1.1 million tonnes of PCB-contaminated material exists within the EU. And look at this map. The darkest areas of red show the parts of Europe with the most PCB-laden material yet to be disposed of. We are dealing with a big legacy here, but I think we need to make sure that the marine mammal problem is kept in, in proportion. Yes, there is a PCB problem there. We've had PCB problems in other marine mammals in the past, for example, in seals in the Baltic. Seal populations are now recovering. Uh, the PCB problem hasn't completely gone away, but it's, it's been largely dealt with. We can deal with this, uh, but it takes quite a lot of time to take these PCBs out of the system. PCBs can be cleared to help future generations, but it's not easy. One way is incineration of the remaining materials that contain them, but to do the job, temperatures must reach more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. If we could get the PCB concentration down now significantly, and, and that's a big ask, but if we could do that, I do think these populations would eventually recover. So, it, you know, there is a reason for optimism, but if we don't do anything, we'll slowly lose the last few killer whales and, you know, it, it'll be a terrible tragedy, it really will.